This is Katherine Schmer at Chattanooga State Community College, and this is video two of projectile motion. A projectile is fired with an initial speed of 840 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. We want to know when will the projectile strike, how far away will the projectile strike, how high overhead will the projectile be when it is 5 kilometers downrange, and what is the greatest height reached, reached by the projectile. So because we're not told a starting point, we assume that it is starting from the origin, 0, 0. We can use our formula that we developed in the last video, r of t, the position, equals the quantity v naught cosine alpha t plus x naught as your i component plus the quantity negative one half g t squared plus v naught sine alpha t plus y naught as your j component. Now remember g is gravity, v naught is initial speed, and alpha is the angle with the horizontal. So we have that information here. We know that our initial speed is 840 and our angle is 60 degrees. So we have R of t equals 840 cosine of 60 degrees t as our i component. And the quantity negative 4.9 t squared plus 840 sine of 60 degrees t as our j component. Our x naught and y naught are 0, 0, since those are the initial position. Now we want to simplify this, and we know that cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. So simplified, we get position r of t equals 420ti, plus the quantity negative 4.9t squared plus 420 square root of 3 times t as our j component. So we will use this um, position equation, position vector, to find the answers to a, b, c, and d. So when will the projectile strike? That's also known as the flight time. We're looking for the time that the project that the projectile is in the air. Part B, how far away will the projectile strike? That's also called the range. And so these are um, other terms that you might hear that are asking the same thing. And then what's the greatest height? You might be asked for the max height or maximum height. So let's answer part A, when will the projectile strike? So it will strike when y equals 0. y is just the j component of my position vector. So my j component was negative 4.9t squared plus 420 square root of 3t, and I set that equal to 0 because I want to know when the projectile is landing on the ground. So the easiest way to solve this is factor, since I have a t in both of the terms. So I have t times the quantity negative 4.9t plus 420 square root of 3, close the parentheses, and that whole thing equals 0. Now I can use the 0 factor property, so I know that either t equals 0, which is the start time of the projectile going into the air, or negative 4.9t plus 420 square root of 3 equals 0. Now this will give me the time when the projectile hits the ground after being in the air. And I isolate the t and I get t equals 420 square root of 3 divided by 4.9. Now this is the exact flight time or the exact moment when the projectile will strike. Normally you'll be asked to round your answer <clears throat> and give an approximate value. So if we um, approximate that, we get 148.46 seconds that the projectile spends in the air. Now part B asks us, um, how far away will the projectile strike? So we know when it strikes, and we know that 
how far away will be the x component of position. So what we'll do is we'll plug in the flight time to the x component of position. So, and we know that x equals 420t. So the range equals 420 times the flight time, and I'm going to use the exact flight time, so 420 times the time 420 square root of 3 over 4.9. So I put that all into my calculator and round to the nearest meter, so I have 62,354 meters. That's how far away the projectile will strike the ground. Now the 420 in my range, in my x position, um, was meters per second, and then the flight time was in seconds, and that's how I end up with meters as my answer. Okay, part C. How high overhead will the projectile be when it is 5 kilometers downrange? Now, this is a little bit of a problem because my original um, position function was built using meters and seconds, not kilometers. So, first thing I want to do is change kilometers to meters. 5 kilometers equals 5,000 meters you have to use the same unit of measurement throughout the problem. So now we're going to let the x component equal 5,000 and solve for t. So I have 420t equals 5,000. Divide and I get t equals 250 over 21. So I simplified the fraction so that it will be easier to work with. So to find height, height is the y component of position so I'm going to plug in this time to the y component, so the 250 over 21. Height equals negative 4.9 times 250 over 21 quantity squared plus 420 square root of 3 times the quantity 250 over 21. So I plug the time into the y component of position and plug that into my calculator, I get 7,966 meters. Usually they'll ask you to round to the nearest meter when you're finding any kind of height or range. Now what is the greatest height reached by the projectile? So what we're really looking for is the vertex of the y component um, y. y equals negative 4.9t squared plus 420 square root of 3t. And we know this is an upside down parabola, so the projectile is shooting up into the air, following a parabolic path, and then coming down um, to the x-axis, or the ground. So to find the point where the vertex occurs, I'm going to take the derivative of y, y prime, equals negative 9.8t plus 420 square root of 3. So I just took the derivative of the y component and I set that equal to 0. I'm finding the critical point just like in calculus 1 when you're trying to find a maximum or a minimum. So I solve this for t. I get t equals 420 square root of 3 divided by 9.8. Now there's something to notice here. Um, since we started at the point zero, 0, the vertex is reached at t equals half of the flight time. So our complete flight time was 420 square root of 3 over 4.9. Half of that would be 420 square root of 3 over 9.8. This is always the case when you're starting at zero, 0, for your initial position. Okay, now we want the greatest height, remember y gives us the height, so the max height equals y of 420 square root of 3 over 9.8. So I'm going to plug that time into uh, my y function. I get negative 4.9 times the quantity 420 square root of 3 over 9.8 quantity squared plus 420 square root of 3 times the quantity 420 square root of 3 over 
Put that all in your calculator and round to the nearest meter and we get 27,000 meters. So that will be the maximum height that our projectile reaches. So just to review, um, to find the flight time or when your projectile will strike, you set the y component of position equal to zero and solve for time. To find the range, you take that flight time and plug it into the x component of position. And to find your maximum height, you're trying to find the vertex of the y component of position. Now let's discuss some equations for ideal projectile motion. So this is when an object is launched from the origin, so launched from 0, 0, over a horizontal surface with initial speed v naught and launched at angle alpha. And this first, um, this first equation, the vector equation for position, we already derived in video 1 of projectile motion. So r vector r equals the quantity v naught cosine alpha t times i, that's my i component, and my j component is v naught sine alpha t minus one half of gravity times t squared times j. Now the other equation that we'll be using is the range equation. Range, um, we use a capital R, so R equals v naught squared, initial speed squared, divided by gravity times sine of 2 alpha. Now we can use this range equation um, to solve for range or initial speed a little more quickly than going through the um, entire steps that we did in the last problem. So in this example, a spring gun at ground level um, fires a golf ball at an angle of 45 degrees. The ball lands 10 meters away, and what we want to know what the initial speed of the ball was. So we know that 45 degrees is our alpha, lands 10 meters away, gives us our range, and our range equation is range equals initial speed squared divided by gravity times sine of 2 alpha. So I'm going to plug in everything I know. 10 equals v naught squared divided by 9.8 times sine of 90 degrees. So I doubled the angle. 45 times 2 gives me 90 degrees. And then I just solve for v naught. So I know sine of 90 is 1. So I end up with 98 equals v naught squared. Take the square root. So v naught equals square root of 98, and that's going to be my initial speed, square root of 98 meters per second. Now remember, speed is a magnitude, so it's always positive. When we're talking about speed, there's no direction attached. So you'll always get a positive when you're doing this. All right, in this example, we want to know what two angles of elevation will make a projectile um, reach a target 16 kilometers downrange on the same level as the gun if the projectile's initial speed is 400 meters per second. So I'm first I'm going to draw out what would happen. So if I fire a projectile at an angle alpha to the horizontal, it's going to make a parabolic path and then land somewhere downrange. Now say I fire um, the same projectile with a higher angle, so I'm firing it higher up into the air. If I get the right angle, it's going to go up higher and then come down and strike the ground at the same point that, um, that it did when I fired at an angle of alpha. 
and that magic angle is when I make an angle of alpha with the vertical. So basically, we're going to use the range formula to find the first angle, and then subtract from 90 degrees to find the second angle. So we know 16 kilometers down range is our range. So range equals 16 kilometers, which I want to change to meters. So that equals 16,000 meters. And capital R range equals V naught squared over G times sine 2 alpha. So I plug in all, all the um, values that I know. 16,000 equals 400 squared divided by 9.8 times sine of 2 alpha. So that's 0.98 equals sine of 2 alpha. Now I take the inverse sine, 2 alpha equals inverse sine of 0.98. So 2 alpha equals 78.52 degrees. Divide by 2 and I get alpha equals 39.26 degrees. So that's my initial angle. That, that will be the first angle that will land at the certain point downrange, 16 kilometers downrange. The second angle is going to be 90 degrees minus 39.26 degrees. So my second angle is 50.74 degrees. And that will be how you find your two angles that will both make the projectile land 16 kilometers downrange.